All right, now we're going to move on to talking about horizontal stress. We've done vertical total stress, vertical effective stress, pore pressure. Uh, horizontal stresses can also be an important part of understanding um, what's happening in soil. Um, and you can imagine um, a case where we have to build a retaining wall, right? So I'll just give you an example of when horizontal stresses might be important. Let's say that this soil is being held up by a wall. Uh, here's the wall. And usually the wall has to have some kind of foundation, right? And then there's more soil over here. So if you want to know how much horizontal pressure there is acting on this wall, maybe like that, uh, you need to know something about the horizontal stress in the soil. So it's important to understand how to calculate it um, so that we can do engineering problems. So um, the thing about um, stress states in soil is that the horizontal effective stress, sigma h prime, is generally different from the vertical effective stress, sigma v prime. Okay, we know that pore pressure, if there's water, the water pressure is the same in all directions, right? It's not going to change because it can't handle any shear stress. The pressure has to be the same in all directions um, because water has no shear strength. Soil does have shear strength. It's able to carry load between in, in the form of interparticle contact forces. So you get a horizontal pressure that's different from the vertical pressure. Um, and usually the horizontal pressure is lower than the vertical pressure. But that doesn't always have to be the case. All right, you could imagine, like, what if we were to push horizontally on this retaining wall with a big force? We could change the soil pressure, right? So uh, the way that we deal with um, horizontal pressures is that we assign an earth pressure coefficient k. So k is the coefficient of horizontal earth pressure, and it is a very simple calculation. Sigma h prime is just equal to k times sigma v prime. So we have to know what K is in order to calculate horizontal pressure, but um, we can usually make a good assumption about that K parameter. Now, one thing I'll point out, K should never be used for total stresses, okay? Only for effective stresses, sigma H prime is equal to K times sigma V prime. Never use sigma H equals K times sigma V. And the reason is that um, K is really relating how the interparticle forces vertically are related to the interparticle forces horizontally, whereas total stress, so, so that's the interparticle forces are effective stresses, right? Um, total stresses are the effective stresses plus the water pressure, but we know that water pressure is the same in all directions, so it doesn't make sense that there would be a fundamental relationship between sigma V and sigma H. The fundamental relationship is between the effective stresses. So I put in red here. Don't do this. It's easy to forget, but just keep in mind, you know, that you need to be operating on effective stresses. Um, okay, so K, I mentioned here, I read it, wrote it out. K is an effective stress parameter, not a total stress parameter. Okay, another thing to think about is that the, the stress condition in the ground might change. Right, I mentioned, what if we pushed on that retaining wall? Now we would be increasing the horizontal pressure and the vertical pressure wouldn't really change. So um, there can be different uh, loading conditions for which we want to know what is the ratio between horizontal and vertical pressures. So one of them, and, and then uh, corresponding to these different conditions, we'll use different subscripts on K. So here's one, K naught, or K sub O. And it's the coefficient of at-rest earth pressure. And what at-rest means is just whatever exists in the ground right now. So there was some soil that was deposited, maybe it's alluvium, and it's horizontal, the surface is horizontal. Okay, there's going to be some coefficient of at-rest earth pressure, and the vertical pressure is generally bigger than the horizontal pressure for natural soil deposits. So k naught is a number that's usually less than 1. It can be bigger than 1, though. Um, okay, so that's not a failure condition, right? k naught is just whatever is in the ground right now, and we might want to know that. But of course, once we load the soil, we're going to change the pressures, and k will change. So there are two limiting cases. These are failure conditions that we'll talk about in more detail when we get to talking about soil strength. But I'll just define them here. So k a is the coefficient of active earth pressure, 
And that's an earth pressure failure condition where the horizontal stress becomes so small that the soil fails and it tends to flow horizontally. So for the retaining wall problem here, right, usually the retaining wall would move that way if it fails and the horizontal pressure would decrease and then the soil would flow horizontally. Okay, and then there's the coefficient of passive pressure and that's where the horizontal pressure becomes so large and the vertical pressure doesn't change that the soil fails in the other mode. So if you were to push hard on this wall, like in that direction, like this, how hard can you push before the soil fails and then you would get a little bulge of soil back there, right? So that's active and passive. In reality, the real earth pressure coefficient can be anywhere between the active and passive condition. And k naught is between those two states somewhere. Um, okay, so let's talk about the steps. There's five steps if you are given a soil profile, including unit weights and coefficients of earth pressure. Um, there are five steps that you have to follow in order to compute the profiles of vertical total stress, sigma v, core pressure u, vertical effective stress, sigma v prime, horizontal effective stress, sigma h prime, and then sigma h, horizontal total stress. So step one, calculate sigma v. We already know how to do that. You just integrate unit weight with depth. We've already gone through an Excel worksheet to do that. Second, compute the pore pressure. Here you just integrate the unit weight of water below the groundwater table. Um, third, compute effective stress, vertical effective stress, sigma v prime. It's just equal to sigma v minus u. Okay, these are all review steps. The two new steps now are to compute the horizontal effective stress, sigma h prime. That's going to just be k times sigma v prime. And then we have to compute the horizontal total stress. It's sigma h prime plus u. All right, now um, this is where it can get confusing. You might be tempted to do horizontal total stresses there. Remember, you always do horizontal effective stresses first and then total stresses come back later. Okay, and the reason why we're able to add these two things together is that u is the same in both directions. All right, technically we've computed u as being the vertical pore pressure by integrating with depth below the water table. But of course, since water can't sustain shear stress, it's the same in both directions. So U doesn't have a V or an H subscript. It's just the same in all directions. And you can add it to the horizontal effective stress to get the horizontal total stress. So let's go through an example. And this is um, just the upper two layers from the previous example that we've done. But I've added now these coefficients of at, of at rest earth pressure, K naught one and K naught two. And they can be different. Okay, so different soils might have different earth pressure coefficients. Usually stronger soils have a lower at rest earth pressure coefficient. So here we've got one half for the earth pressure coefficient in layer one and 0 0.4 in layer two. Okay, we already know what the pore pressure, vertical effective stress, and vertical total stress profiles should look like. We qualitatively went through that before. So let's now qualitatively go through what the horizontal effective stress and horizontal total stress profiles should look like, and then we'll calculate them too. So let's start with sigma h prime. Okay, so in layer one, sigma h prime is simply 0 0.5 times sigma v prime. So it's really easy. We take the black line that corresponds to sigma v prime, multiply it by a half, and we get the pressure distribution um, horizontal effective stress in layer one. So I'm just going to sketch it something like this. Then it changes slope right there at the water table. So there's our um, initial part. Okay, now here's a tricky thing. Once we get into layer two, the value of K changes. So at a soil point, like right above the interface, you have K equals 0 0.5. At a soil point right below the interface, you have K equals 0 0.4. So there's potential for a discontinuity in horizontal earth pressure at a layer interface. So in this case, you do get a discontinuity. The K naught decreases, so you take a horizontal step to the left and then increase with depth like that. So this is what I would anticipate the horizontal effective stress profile to look like. A little discontinuity there, and then it comes down. Uh, okay, now we add the pore pressure to this in order to get the um, horizontal total stress. So above the water table, horizontal effective stress and horizontal total stress will be the same. 
Now, when we reach that interface, we're going to have a, whoops, a big increase in the slope because we're integrating uh, something that has water pressure along with it. Uh, okay, and then at, so this, this distance between these two is U, right? That distance right there is the pore pressure. Then we're going to have the same discontinuity, so it'll move to the left. And then it's going to increase with depth like that. So uh, I didn't label these. That's what I would anticipate sigma h to look like. Then the one on the left is sigma h prime. All right, so uh, that's just qualitative. Let's go and do the calculations and see what happens. So I'm going to go over to Excel now. Um, put my keyboard in so that it's easy for me to type. And um, let's, add, okay, yeah, exit tablet mode. What I'm going to do to make this straightforward and clear is insert a column, and we'll call it layer number. And this is going to be layer one, 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 and then we get to a depth of two meters, and we switch between, well, first of all, um, here, I'm going two and then two. Um, one thing that I've done already, this, this cell didn't exist before. So um, before we just had zero, one, two, and four, because we were only worried about vertical stress. Now we're going to need to have two rows for the depth of two meters, because we have two different soil types meeting right at that interface, and they have different K values. So what I'm going to do is redo this. I'm going to insert a layer at a depth of two meters. This will be in layer two. So now we have one entry at a depth of two meters in layer one and another entry at a depth of two meters in layer two. And then we transition to having a 20 kilonewton per meter cube, the unit weight. Um, we should be able to just drag and drop these equations, which existed before, for pore pressure, vertical total stress, and vertical effective stress. So vertical stresses are all the same. Right? We haven't changed vertical stresses because the depth is the same. So let me copy this over to here. And I'm going to change the subscript to an H instead of a V. And then all we need to do now to compute sigma H prime is do equals, um, well, here, let's make, let's make a cell and call it K naught. And I will actually change it. I'll make it a subscript. Format cells, subscript. Okay, and then in layer one, we have 0 0.5. So I'm just looking at, at this column now and putting 0 0.5 if the layer number is one. In layer two, we have 0 0.4. So now we have our K naught column done. In order to compute sigma H prime, it's really simple. You just do K naught times sigma v prime, right? So it's zero at the top, and then we drag and drop, and you're getting horizontal pressures. The horizontal effective stresses are much smaller than vertical effective stresses, right? Because we're multiplying them by a number that's smaller than one. Okay, and then if we want to compute uh, sigma h, this is now horizontal total stress. I'm going to come in here and change this subscript to an h. We do sigma prime plus Pore pressure U, and then we can drag and drop, and we've got those done now as well. Okay, and so let's insert a graph. Um, let's see, I think what I'll do is copy this one, which we've already done. Come in here and paste it, and then um, let's see. We need to change the data to be from this worksheet. So this will be total stress here, total, vertical total stress. And then this one is the new depth column B here. Still not sure why this window is so big. Okay, I'm going to pause the video, fix this, and then I'll be right back. All right, great. I'm back. I have uh, 
fixed this plot, so it's now referencing columns from this horizontal stresses worksheet. Um, and it looks exactly the same as the plot that we derived previously for the total stress worksheet, um, except we're only going down to four meters instead of six. So what I'm going to do now is copy this and paste it here. Uh, usually, you know, I guess we have a decision to make. We could plot horizontal stresses on the same uh, worksheet if we wanted to, and we would have two more lines in there and then a legend with five entries in it. Uh, I'm going to put them separate in separate plots just because um, horizontal stresses do tend to be quite a bit lower than vertical, and so it's hard to see them sometimes if they're plotted together. I'm going to leave the pore pressure in here because that is part of the horizontal stress. And now what I'll do is just drag this over to the effective stress window and then drag this one over to the horizontal total stress window. And uh, there's, our, there's our outcome. You can see these discontinuities at a depth of two meters that arise from having different values of K0 in these cells, right? It transitions from 0 0.5 down to 0 0.4. And then, um, let's see, we have to change the names of these series. So let me, let me do that. This one's gonna be called Horizontal Effective Stress. And this one Horizontal total stress. Um, okay, and I'm, I actually mislabeled that, uh, and the legend's not showing up. So I'll fix these things again. Hit pause real quick, and I'll be back with a fixed up graph. All right, so we're back. I've fixed this up to where we have the right. Uh, legend and have changed this to horizontal stress or pore pressure. So we're all set. What I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and copy this and uh, paste it into the PDF file. Here. All right, I'm really not sure what that was all about. Let's try pasting again. Huh, bizarre. Well, we can copy at least the two figures and paste them. All right, so we have the figures. Before I upload the notes, I'll figure out how to paste the table as well. But now you've got the process here for computing um, horizontal stresses in addition to vertical stresses. And that concludes uh, the section on stress.